There's a way to be able to have more caffeine without the negative effects. Seriously, like you can literally have more coffee without the negative effects. For someone like me who really likes caffeine, I like my green tea, I like my yerba mate, I like my coffee, I just like it. This came as a very welcome bout of research. So this is a pretty newly discovered compound. It's so new that we're really just looking at rodent model research and very early human research. Safety things are all okay. We're not seeing anything from the safety side, but we do need more human studies to really confirm how effective it is with caffeine. But if you want anything kind of cool in this world, you gotta be on the cutting edge of it. So we're gonna dive into what this compound is, how to utilize it, but what the research says about it and how you can combine it properly with coffee. So let's go ahead and dive in. And after today's video, a big thank you to Element. That is a link down below for a free sample variety pack of Element electrolytes. So that means like any one of their products that you purchase, you get a free sample variety pack. They also have ready to drink carbonated electrolytes. We're talking zero calorie products with 1000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams magnesium. So that link down below, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. My go-to flavors, the citrus salt and the grapefruit salt. These are unbelievably delicious and they totally curb my appetite. So I drink them in between meals and things like that. Again, also give me a little bit of pick-me-up. Sometimes salt really ends up helping with that just pick-me-up that I think I need food, but I really just needed some salt. So that link is down below. So cutting right to the chase, this compound is called rudocarpine. But if you just go out and buy it on Amazon, you might be kind of left in the dark on how to use it. So we'll talk about how to use it. Essentially what it is, is it's technically a COX-2 inhibitor, which doesn't really matter. It blocks inflammatory pathways in certain ways, but it also speeds up caffeine metabolism, which is wild because if you look at the early rodent model research, they took about three days of 80 milligrams per kilogram of rudocarpine, which is a lot, but we're talking about for rodents here. And then they gave them 20 milligrams per kilogram of caffeine. What they found is that this rudocarpine accelerated the metabolism of the caffeine out of the body. It expedited the metabolism. And it did so by not just expediting caffeine out, but it expedited the caffeine metabolites out. So theobromine, paraxanthine, there's these other metabolites that are downstream. The way that it did this is it increased these enzymes, these enzymes that are called, in this case, CYP1A2 and CYP2E1. These are what break down caffeine into their metabolites. So in some studies, we've seen literally up to a 3x increase in these enzymes, particularly CYP1A2. So that means that you are having a 75% expedited clearance of caffeine out of the system. Where this comes in extra handy is really in two cases. One, if you drink too much caffeine and you're like, uh-oh, I overdid it. I'm jittery, I'm, I don't like this feeling. The other is that if you are drinking caffeine later in the day and you wanna kinda of decrease the effectiveness or you want to get it out of your system faster, there are a lot of times when I wanna have a cup of coffee, but I'm like, I don't really wanna have 100 milligrams of caffeine right now. I could do with maybe 25 milligrams. I could maybe have a half calf, right? Or I could get something that I enjoy and I could pop some rudocarpine and actually get this out of my system faster. So not only does it decrease it a little bit, but it gets it out of your system fast. So it's like if you need to pick me up and then you need to come down, this is a really interesting hack so that you can still have more caffeine. The interesting thing is, when you look at the literature of when to take it, if you had have looked at this a couple of years ago, you would have said, oh, you have to take it for days and it has to build up in your system and then it's gonna carry over and you might decrease the effectiveness of caffeine overall. But now we're seeing it can actually work within hours. So like if you were to have caffeine in the afternoon, you could take rudocarpine with it and it would immediately start getting the caffeine out of your system faster. So you'd be ready for sleep and not have a sleep disruption. Now, additionally, you can take it beforehand. You could take it a few hours before so it builds up. So that way when you do drink it later, it's not gonna have as much of a stimulatory effect. It just might get gently pick you up. A lot of times the problem is that we just, we think we need more caffeine. In reality, we just need a little bump, especially as the day goes on, you need less caffeine typically. There was one particular study where they gave 100 milligrams of rudocarpine per kilogram of body weight. Again, a ton, <laughs> that's a lot that ultimately found that it increased the caffeine clearance by 75%. So again, just getting it out of your system really quick. Let's talk specifically about how it impacts sleep though, because there was a study published in Biomedical Therapeutics that analyzed this, and it's fascinating. They found in this study that rudocarpine completely reversed the caffeine-induced negative effects on sleep. 
So basically, caffeine would disrupt sleep, would change sleep wave cycles. They did a full sleep test, and they found that rudocarpine just abolished that. The caffeine, the effects of caffeine on sleep were essentially negated. The other thing that was interesting is they also noticed that it decreased general excitability, not even just associated with caffeine, but they found that people were less jumpy, or in this case rodents, like less anxiety, so any kind of anxiolytic tendencies seemed to go down. Really fascinating with that. But mechanistically, what was interesting is they found that caffeine inhibits the action of GABA. Now, GABA, gamma amino butyric acid, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. What this means is it it blocks the excitatory response of like a neuron, right? So it, it, it helps relax you. If you drink alcohol, it increases GABA, right? It makes you chill, makes you relax. GABA is good, not when induced by alcohol, but GABA is good. The point is, is that caffeine blunts GABA. It's, it blocks GABA from doing its job, so you get more excitable, which isn't always good in the evening. It's not always good in general. They found that what happens here is that rudocarpine actually reversed this, so it allowed GABA to still remain active I cannot explain how important this is because this is not just good for like when you're sleepy. It's also good for if you take it in the morning and you don't want the anxiolytic effects of caffeine. In other words, you could have caffeine, have energy and not get super anxious and like over the top kind of wired up from it. The cool thing is, is that independent of any caffeine ingestion as well, it looks like rudocarpine has some powerful effects on the 5-HT receptor. So it can impact serotonin which actually makes you feel good and actually makes you sedated and fall asleep in your, anyway. But then additionally, it also brings down interleukin-6 because it is a COX-2 inhibitor. So it helps you sleep by reducing brain inflammation, but also by just kind of having a just calming effect on the serotonin pathways in our body. In fact, the researchers even said, and I quote, it exerts sedative, anxiolytic, and antidepressive effects. There's another compound that's more commonly known. It's called apigenin. Apigenin also has a unique way of increasing CYP1A2 as well. So if you ever needed to get caffeine out of your system really fast, a combination of apigenin and rudocarpine could really get it out of your system fast. The other interesting thing is both rudocarpine, but especially apigenin, have a huge effect on blood glucose. They can modulate glucose, which would also impact your sleep. So caffeine has rocky impacts on our, on our uh, blood glucose as well. It can sometimes allow glycogen to dump, all kinds of mixed feelings and mixed literature on that, but we do see blood glucose changes, and especially with the epinephrine response from caffeine. So in other words, when you add these compounds in, it stabilizes that, which might help you sleep. Generally speaking, if you look at rudocarpine, like on Amazon or whatever, it's gonna be like 100 milligram dosages. I don't know if there's a tolerable upper intake yet. It's really just coming from a Chinese tree, but herbs and bushes and crap like that can do weird things in your body. I mean, look at all kinds of compounds that come from plants that might do nefarious things, right? Point is, you can probably start with like a one or 200 milligram dose, see how you feel and titrate up from there. And if you start finding that it's like too sedative, then maybe you back it off. I think everyone's gonna have a different level because everyone has a different speed of caffeine metabolism. So our levels in the CYP category within our liver that metabolize caffeine vary wildly. That's why you see some people that are fast metabolizers, slow metabolizers, build a tolerance quick. So you kind of have to find your sweet spot. So as always, keep it locked here on my channel. See you tomorrow.